Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture, we will study about two types of constraints that is, attribute and tuple level constraint. Value based constraints are actually attribute level constraints. That is, when a constraint is applied on a single attribute, then it is value based, while a tuple based constraint is applied on a tuple as a whole. Rest of the types will be or are discussed in different lectures of same series. Let's figure out attribute level constraint first. A simple example of constraint on attribute is not null. That is, the value of a particular attribute cannot be null. For example, here we are creating two tables, product and category using SQL. Product table is being defined by attributes ID, which can be written using 20 characters and is primary key. Name attribute, which can be also written up to 20 characters, but it has an additional constraint that is not null. Meaning, while inserting any new tuple in product table, name cannot be left null. Similarly, we have a product price and a category ID attribute, which is referencing our category table using the foreign key constraint. Likewise, category table is being created using ID, name, description, attributes. So here we have modified our product table definition a little. We have also added not null constraint on the category ID attribute of product table, which is also related to the category table as foreign key attribute. So we have two constraints on this attribute. Can you think of the implications or effects of adding such constraint on your application? So first issue is that we will not be able to insert any new tuple without specifying its category. We cannot leave null in the value of category ID. Second issue is the consequence of the first. That is, we cannot use set null policy, that is to add null as value in the attribute of category ID when category ID in the category table is deleted or updated. If you have difficulty in understanding this on delete set null policy or how foreign keys are added, you can always look into the video lecture of foreign key constraints, which is uploaded in a different lecture in the same series. We can also add constraints on attributes using keyword check. It is usually used when we have more complex constraints to add to our attribute, maybe like adding limits or range to our attribute value, some character checking, and arithmetic checks, etc. Basically, whatever you can type in where in SQL query can be used with check keyword. You can even type sub queries inside check. Attribute level check constraints are checked with any change in the attribute value. If you try to make any change to the attribute that does not satisfy the constraint, then DBMS rejects such changes. In this example table student, we have added two constraints, one on GP attribute with data type real and other on gender attribute. Constraint on GPA says that no student should have GPA less than or equal to 2 or greater than or equal to 4. So this student table only contains students with more than 2 GPA. Similarly on gender attribute, check make sure that no value other than F or M are added. So if you are trying to insert a tuple with GPA 1.0 or gender value G instead of F or M, then I will get an error from DBMS. Similarly, DBMS will reject any update to attributes that does not satisfy constraint. It is to be noted here that constraint is checked on new values and not on old values. Also, constraint is not checked if other attributes which are not part of the constraint are modified. We might think that we can implement our foreign key constraint using attribute based check constraint as we allow to type queries inside check. For foreign key implementation, all we need to do is to make sure that whatever category ID we insert or update in product table is present in the category table. So whenever a CID in product table changes, then we need to search the CID in category table as well. If it is present, then good, else constraint is violated. So we have added check after category ID in product table and passed a query inside which says that category ID of product table must be in, uh, in the single column relation having category ID from category table as attribute. So what possible issues can come with this attribute level constraint implementation? If we insert any tuple in product table with null category, then it may or may not be allowed. Assume a CID of category table is not null attribute and you try to insert it in product a null CID, then it will be rejected. Also, if we delete a tuple in category table, 
then check constraints for CID in product table will not be checked and thus we might then have certain tuples with CID that is not present in category table and creating room for invalid data. Just as attribute is checked for attribute level constraint, similarly tuple based check constraint is checked for new or updated tuple. Any change or update that causes violation to the check constraint will be rejected. It is written as part of a data element and interpreted as double level constraint. Names of attributes of relation R can be used inside check constraint. Subqueries can also be written inside. Same issue as discussed in previous slide can occur for double level constraints. That is, if there is a change to any other relation in a subquery and if this change causes our check constraint violation, then this will not be addressed because these constraints are only executed or checked if tuple of same relation R changes. Even deletion of any tuple from R can make our constraint to become false, so it is better to have no subqueries in attribute or tuple-based check constraints. This example has been taken from the Stack Overflow. We have a table named sample, which is composed of two attributes, one being column 1, which is of data type watcher, and column 2, which is of data type int. We also have added a tuple-based check constraint here, which is composed of certain cases. So let's say if we try to insert a tuple with values A and 49. So as per our check constraint, if user enters A, then a 49 will be compared with 50. If 49 is less than 50, then this tuple will be inserted successfully. If we try to insert a tuple with value A and 50, then this 50 will be compared with this 50 value. If it is 50, since 50 is not less than 50 as per our check, then it will be not inserted. For insert 3, if insert B and 100, then 100 is compared with 100, which is false again. For insert 4, with values C and 149, 149 is compared with 150. So, it is inserted successfully. Similarly, for insert 5, there is no case to match, so else will be executed, that is, adding 1 to 5000, but it, it will have no effect as value is not saved into any variable. 5000 will be compared with 5001, and so insertion will be successful. So if a constraint has one attribute, then it is considered as attribute level or tuple level constraint. And if it has more than one attribute, then it is considered as tuple level constraint. Tuple level constraint is fired when any value in the tuple changes, while attribute level fires when attribute changes.